I'm not like every other housemaid. I think that's why I was requested at the strange mansion on top of a hill. Because when I got there, things were not what they seem. Oh heavens! What have I gotten myself into? Well, they can't say I don't come prepared. Look out, dust bunnies! It's time for some spring cleaning! Finally, I have been meaning to give this game the proper review it deserves. And this game is called Marble Maid. When I saw the trailer for the Nintendo Switch, I immediately had to get a day one, as it looked very interesting. And this was around a time when Seven Pirates H was on its way. It's been two years since I picked it up, and it's been over five months since I played it. So, does it still hold up to this day? Let's find out. Goki Genyo, everyone, star the protagonist is here, and this is my review on Marble Maid. Marble Maid was originally for Steam, released on November 4th, 2020. It was developed and published by Sadie Corner Games, an indie developer slash publisher who is known for making raunchy indie games like Shady Loot Cart, a hentai kart racer which looks pretty fun. They even did a bunch of collaborations for the game, like with the artist Terpixion bringing their characters Bonbon bon and Choo Choo into the game. They even added Zotan from Zone Tunes, Onyx from Aeromancer, and of course because this is a loot kart racer, they couldn't resist collaborating with pa Project Melody. Let's get lewd and rude, my dudes. We're gonna need a few toms over here. Hi, I'm Project Melody. I was just basic software until an email made me all lewd and stuff. Honestly, it makes sense considering how much of an impact she's made throughout the 2020s. Though if they were to do more DLC, I loved it for them to collaborate with other raunchy VTubers like Fifi and Lucy Pyre. The game would also have Marvel made in it 8 months before having her own game. It did well on Steam, but fast forward to 2022, it would also be released on a Nintendo Switch with the help of East Asia Soft, the same publisher behind 7 Pirates H. So the Switch version would be the one I'll be looking at for this review. You'll see why once we go into this review. One day, a cute little maid was hired to clean a mansion as it was pretty dirty. Little did she know, it would be infested with dust bunnies. So in order to complete her task, she has to get down and dirty with the dust bunnies, both literally and sexually. So you're in the maid inside a marble, which makes sense for the title of the game. And since you're rolling around inside a marble, you can expect the movement to be just like any other marble game. However, this is more like Super Monkey Ball except you're a maid rolling around inside a marble. Now I will say, the movement isn't all that bad. Rolling down certain paths and trying to get where you need to go doesn't ruin my enjoyment of the game. You can jump anywhere you want for the most part, and if you hold down the Y button, you'll be able to do a Sonic the Hedgehog and spin dash your way through obstacles, but don't use it too much or else you'll end up falling off the stage. So the gameplay and the controls are pretty solid. I do wish they could have given her a double jump, but it's just a nitpick, and it still plays well without it. There are 5 stages for you to go through, and each stage has 10 levels to complete. The goal for each level is to collect at least 3 dust bunnies in order to open the exit. But you'll need to do it fast before the timer hits zero and you have to redo the level all over again. Thankfully, you have infinite lives, so you can keep going until you can complete the level. But let's not act like this game is a super cakewalk. Every level has a bunch of obstacles for you to go through, which leads us to the stages themselves. The first area acts as a tutorial stage for you to learn the controls and the gameplay. The second area is the kitchen where you'll have to avoid getting hit by the toasters since they shoot flames at certain points. There's also cleavers to avoid as well, platforms that'll fall if you stand on them for more than 3 seconds, and some levels will have the lights off. So you'll have to find lit up can candles in order to see where you're going and this applies to the other three areas. The third area is the bathroom where there's ice blocks you can roll on, but it prevents you from jumping. There's also fans that blows you from obstacles at certain points. The fourth area is the dining room, where it has you jumping over wine bottles, avoiding the gelatin as they bounce you to certain points that you didn't want to go to, and it has spinning plates that are platforms for you to jump on. And finally, there's the bedroom where all the action happens. You have disappearing platforms, magical blankets that'll take you to the next part of a level and for each stage, 
there are platforms that you can bounce on to get to higher parts of the level and what makes the game fun is that the game spikes up the difficulty a bit but not to the extreme some levels can be pretty challenging especially when you get to the fourth area that's where it really gets intense and because you're on a time limit that also requires you to finish the levels as fast as you can Personally, I think the game succeeds in difficulty and challenge. There were a few levels that I didn't find amazing, but for the most part, I really had a good time rolling my way through each level. There are also hidden levels within the levels you can find. And after you complete the game, you unlock the harder version of each level with even less time for you to have. If you want to speed run through the game, then it's worth noting that it has a speed run mode for you to try. However, this game wouldn't be better without boss fights. At the end of each stage, you're going up against Nega Maid, the dark version of our cute and naughty maid. The way these fights work is that you'll have to knock her off three times before the timer runs out. And for each fight, she gains different powers, which you'll have to deal with. For the most part, I think these Nega Maid fights are solid, but the last one can kiss my ass. Fighting against her in the dark is very stressful, and you have to make sure you don't fall off. Because if you do, you gotta fight her all over again. Still, the Nega Maze fights are pretty cool. And I like that when you complete the game, not only do you unlock her as a playable character, but you can also play as a monkey maid. Except the only difference is that she has a monkey tail of her butt. You also unlock the shady loot cart kit levels. Nothing special, it's just you collecting dust bunnies, except now you're in a cart. But it's still a sweet reward. Especially since it's paying homage to the previous game, Shady Loot Cart. But as sweet as that reward is, that doesn't compare to the real reward you get. For every five dust bunnies you collect, you unlock sexy pictures of our beloved maid in certain naughty escapades, like her touching herself in the bath, her and Nega Maid doing the naughty, or Nega Maid getting her cheeks clapped by a dust bunny. Yeah, that's actually a thing. You can view other lewd images in the gallery, as there are over 60 of them for you to obtain. And that's not counting the fan art that's also in the game. This is what will drive you to fully completing the game. But that's what makes it fun and rewarding. I love the idea of unlocking the raunchy content from collecting dust bunnies. And I'm pretty sure you'll notice that some of them are censored. Well, that's because the Switch version censors the lower lips but you can still see the titties in full display. This is why I love playing niche games on the Nintendo Switch because Nintendo has become less strict when it comes to fan service games. But if you're playing the Steam version, expect to see everything in full display. In fact, let me compliment the graphics of Marble Maid. This is a very good looking game. The 3D models of the Maid are pretty nice to look at, but I love the animations they do in the top left corner. They look really cute to look at. I even love the one where she does the super peel out just like Sonic back in Sonic CD and I'll never get tired of seeing the panty shots every time they jump and fall off. The soundtrack for the game is pretty cool to listen to, nothing amazing but it's still some good stuff. And props to the voice actress Cum Bomb as she provides the voice of both Marble Maid and Nega Maid. And I'm just saying this right now, if you really are not into lose shit, just stay away from her Twitter, I'm telling you right now. Overall, Marble Maid is what I consider to be a fun Marble platformer. The gameplay is good, the controls are pretty nice, the level adds a good amount of challenge, and I also love the sexy and naughty content that you unlock throughout the game. Now, this isn't a one night stand because the sequel is in the works, where it centers on Nega Maid this time, and hopefully if it gets a Switch release, I'll be able to review it as well. But with what we have now, Marble Maid is still a fun game from start to finish. And even if you don't like the raunchy images, you can avoid the gallery. Personally, I don't mind seeing them because I am a cultured little munchkin. And this cultured little munchkin will give Marble Maid an 8.5 out of 10. Shady Corners, a job well done. With that being said, thank you all for watching. And until then, this is Star the Protagonist signing out. As always, go Kigenyo and have a star tactic day everyone. If you enjoyed today's video, then be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to join the Star Nation. Also, be sure to follow my Twitter, and while you're at it, check out my previous video. Now.